Welcome to this video on automating repetitive tasks with quick steps in Microsoft Outlook. So quick steps are really similar to rules, but you manually engage them rather than set them up to automatically run on certain emails from certain people or with certain attachments or things like that. So they are very similar. There may be some things that you can't do with quick steps, but you might want to automatically create a task from certain emails. And you can set up a quick step so that you can just in one click or a shortcut create that task when you're on that email. And then in this example, you can do that to any email from any person. You don't have to set up a specific rule as to what where the email's from and it doesn't have to follow that, especially if you're going to do this for a number of different emails and things like that. So this might be quite useful for you to have a look at and have a play around with. And they're super, super easy to set up. Now, I will caveat here, I'm using Outlook Online. I do have the new version of Outlook on my desktop on a PC, but the quick step option is not available on that one. So I am in Outlook Online here. So it looks very similar to the application. They're very close now. And in the middle on that ribbon, you'll see quick steps. And that's what I'm going to look for. And this is where my quick steps are going to appear as well once I've created them. So if I just click on that drop down and manage quick steps, then I'm going to get a pop up box that shows me quick steps. Now, just to explain this, if you are using the application, even if you've got the new Outlook, mine didn't show quick steps on this screen. It brought up this screen, but it was missing from the list. So I've come into Outlook Online to create my quick steps, and then I should be able to use them in the desktop version because the quick step option was there, but I couldn't create them. So I will check at the end to make sure it's available in the application, the desktop application, so that I can confirm that in this video as well. But remember, these are manual processes that you're going to kick off with one click or a shortcut, whatever you decide. So I've got nothing set up at the moment here. So I'm going to click on new quick step and we'll have a look at what information we need to fill in. So we need to name our quick step to make it really easy for us to know which one we're selecting if we've got a drop down list of quick steps. So let's put create task. Nice and simple. And the box is already small as well. So do remember that and take that into account. Let's choose an action. So you can see you've got a number of different actions here. All sorts going on. And I can see there I've got create a task. And I can have actions as well. So I can have multiple actions running with that quick step, which is really useful. So if I create another action and click on the drop down, I will mark it as red. So a couple of sensible steps there. I could even add another action and go in and do more. You've got a cross on the right hand side if you want to remove that action. So you do have an optional button at the a couple of fields at the bottom where you can customize the description and choose a shortcut as well if you want to. If you don't choose a shortcut, you'll just have to click it from the list at the top, which I'll show you in a moment. So I'm not going to bother with shortcuts because I forget half of them anywhere. I much prefer to just click where I'm going. There's that many shortcuts that you need to remember. And I work across multiple devices as well. And they're slightly different. So it's just, it's too much for my head. So let's, I'm going to not do a shortcut, but that is absolutely up to you. So this is a create a task. I'm going to click on save and you can see that create task one is there. I've got a pencil to edit and I've got a rubbish bin to get rid of it if I want to. Let's just create another quick one so we can see this again and then we can have a look at multiple ones. I'm going to name this test first and then I want to look at the actions to see what I'm going to choose to do. So I think what we need to do is pin option might be quite useful. So let's do a pin. And now I can rename this to pin Eva. And I'm going to leave it as just one action. I'm just going to leave it as pin. I'm not going to worry about the optional section. I don't want a shortcut like I said before. I just want to use a click. So let's just Click on save and now you can see I've got two there and you can now see the arrows have come into play because this is the order they're going to appear on the list. So the one that you use the most you want to have on the top because that is going to be visually available to you with minimal clicks. 
and the other ones you're going to have to click and scroll down and find it. So let's leave create task at the top and let's just close this down and have a look at what that's done. So in the middle at the top, you can see where it did say quick steps. It now says create task. So I've now got the ability to just click on that and immediately run that quick step. So that will mark my email as read and create a task for that email. If I click on the drop down, you can see I've got pin email as well. And it's got the icons with it to really help you identify it. Just in case you've not named it to so it makes 100% sense. You can name it as a project. You can do all sorts of stuff. If you want to move things into project files and stuff like that, then create quick steps for those really simply and easily. And obviously, if you want to go in and manage them to create, edit or delete or rearrange them if they're in the wrong order and you're always using pin email first, then you can go ahead and do that by managing your quick steps and it will reopen. Let's just have a look at another one. Just move something to a project folder move to and then obviously because I've selected move to I have to tell the system what folder to drop it into so let's put it into stuff for now because I don't have a folder in this example of outlook that I need to use so I'm going to click on see for that one and come out of there and then again if I click on that drop down at the top you can see I've now got move to project folder so I probably need to be a bit more specific there but you can see the amount of text that is visible so that will hopefully help you name them really simply and easy so you can see them on this screen and all you need to do is click on that option so I'm going to pin that email and you can see it's automatically pinned the email that I'd selected so really it's super super simple and easy to use and if there are functionality if there are steps that you always use in Outlook for certain groups of emails there's things that you will always do move things to deleted move things to certain folders rather than trying to find that folder and drag them you can create quick steps really easily to help you manage those processes and you've seen there you can do multiple things at the same time within one quick step and then you don't have to specify what type of email, where it's come from, who it's going to for the rule. You can manually apply that rule to whatever email works for you, which I think is super useful and super helpful and will hopefully make you more productive. It's something that I'm definitely going to use more now that I've dived into this topic, really, because I didn't know it actually existed. And just to prove it, that it does pull through into the application. So even though I couldn't create them in the desktop application, you can see on the top, I'm now in the desktop app, the new Outlook on a PC, on a Windows device. And you can see I've got the quick step button and I can go in and select whichever one works best for me. So let's pin this email as well. And you can see I've got multiple ones pinned there. So if you don't see, if you're not, but if that functionality is not enabled on your desktop app, just use the online version of Outlook to create them. And then you can come back into your, your desktop application and use them for the emails that you need to. So something that will hopefully really add a lot of value, help you be more productive in Outlook and get more done and fo spend that time focusing on those things that really matter. Have a think about the types of quick steps that might work for you. What tasks are you constantly doing to the emails that you get in Outlook and how can you speed up that process? Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.